Hello everyone, welcome back to our next session of uh, the Pella Venture where you are going to experience entrepreneurship. Um, I hope you liked the first session. Uh, we talked a little bit about the introduction, how to form teams, what are some of the aspects of a company, different roles and functions, and also how to do some of the brainstorming and ideas. Let me go through the recap. <clears throat> so if you remember in the last session, we talked about roles, teams, and ideas. Here is a quick recap of what we discussed. We talked about what a company is, what are the various functions in a company, um, how they build products, different functions like marketing, finance, and sales, and the different titles that are there in a company that you may have heard of, like CEO, CFO, uh, Chief Executive Officer, Chief Financial Officer, Chief Operating Officer, then the various functions like marketing, sales, and the employees and employer. We also talked about teams, that entrepreneurship is all about teamwork. <clears throat> no individual gets to do it alone by themselves. It's a group of people coming together, and there are co-founders in a team, and as you form a team of three to five uh, to do this entrepreneurship program, each one of you in the team become a uh, entrepreneur or one of the co-founders of the company that you will start. Why do you form teams? Because you bring various talent together, skills together, and then you work together to make sure that you have your ideas and products, build them, market them, and then sell them. We also talked about how to behave and what are some of the key behaviors to have a good teamwork. We talked about inclusive behavior, being respectful of every individual in the team, um, listening to all the ideas initially that comes from the team members. We also encourage the team to do an exercise where they bring two ideas, each one of them listen without interrupting, and then talk about various aspects of those ideas. We also discuss some of the ways to bring up the questions. If this sounds like a good idea, can you explain more? Or why is this different? Um, instead of being very judgmental about these ideas at the very early stage of forming the team. So we talked about how to brainstorm ideas and one of the important aspects of this um, uh, ideation is that a team has different skills and talent that you will have as you bring your team together, three to five people in your company, right, that you're forming. And we said you should make sure that you unify the talent of the team together to build product ideas versus each individual team members talent cannot become a product right we talked about some examples of those but more importantly we looked at when you are making ideas for a product there is the talent of the team then there are ideas that you'll have but more importantly is there a need will people buy it will they pay money for it are you solving some problem and when these three things intersect together you reach this point in the middle which is the product idea. The best products are always the one which takes your talent, your ideas and there is a need and make sure that happens somewhere in this overlapping zone. Okay, so we did uh, went through we, we went through that and uh, we talked about the success uh, of being in an being an entrepreneur and running company is to make sure that you're smart, you're specific in your goals, be clear about what you're building you have measurable, as in how many products are you going to build, in what time frame, at what cost. Is it achievable? Make sure that it is within the reach of the talent of the team to go build these products. And you want to make sure that you can achieve that. And is it relevant? Are you addressing a problem? Will, is there a need? Will people buy these products? And then last, bu last but not least is being time bound. We have 90 days, we're going through the entrepreneurship program. You want to make sure you're able to build market sell this and then do all of the aspects of learning the entrepreneurship so this is important uh, aspect of how to achieve success using the smart approach um, so these are all just a recap of our previous uh, session that we did um, now i just wanted to call out if you remember there is uh, one critical aspect that i told about everybody in the team has a talent and you need to unify the team's talent if you can so that your product takes advantage of every member's strength rather than building a product for each individual strength. So if you remember, we took an example in the past programs where a team had various talents on art, cooking, 
story writing and things like that and they finally put those together and created a storybook where there were dishes and artwork involved and names of dishes called out in the storyline and at the end of the book they had a recipe for it it kind of brought together the different talent that was there in the team similarly there was another uh, a group that wanted to do theater and design jewelry and also wanted to do some painting they combined that all together by doing skit uh, plays that they uh, sold as a, a, a digital uh, a media of the theatrical work and in their play they had uh, artwork and jewelry which they were able to sell in addition to the uh, theater scene and then the last one was around a team which had craft skills clay work skills and wanted to do some uh, jewelry design so they combined together where they did with the clay they built jewelry that was unique and as well as some other utility items that made it a, a very interesting craft based company again examples of how to bring all of the talent together they didn't go by saying hey we'll do some art work we'll do some catering service and individually but they combined it all together and and came up with unique products which was uh, very impactful so those are a recap of uh, everything that we did in the last session what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the company uh, the name uh, logo for the company and a motto um, so we'll look at some examples because you're going to be starting your own company you want to give a name for your company you want to have a logo for your company and also what does it stand for so that people know what you're all about and then we'll also talk about product description one pager what are the products that you're going to build and how to make a one pager uh, of the products that you're going to build okay with that i'm really excited let's go start right logos and motos um i'm going to give you a whole lot of examples of things that you may have seen so that you can relate to what a logo and motto is and what the company names are so everyone seen this the coca cola uh, you know in in billboards and advertisement boards in magazines uh, to start a refreshment this uh, the coca cola there in red is kind of their logo and this is kind of one of their motos similarly you've seen nike just do it um, you've seen the kerala tourism that talks about their uh, you know whole state and tourist industry and they call it god's own country that's their motto um, you've used lg appliances tv maybe ref, uh, refrigerator and others their motto is life is good and this is their logo um, lego uh, these are the build, uh, blocks that are used for building things as toys and their their motto is play on uh, colgate uh, a home utility product you know it's, a, it's something that you use every day and their 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 uh, their motto there is cleans your breath while uh, while it cleans your teeth boost a nutrition drink um, so clearly there they have their logo with a, uh, and then a complete nutrition drink asian paints this is again uh, for for your houses for painting uh, they got an interesting uh, a logo uh, and and a color world that they call out maruti is a vehicle uh, you you have all seen maruti suzuki and their motto is way of life so these are interesting what i wanted to kind of bring out is the logo is simple the motto is no more than 3 4 5 words at best so that it brings out the essence of what you're doing but look at some more interesting examples these are ones that are very familiar to us i'll show you some more that are little creative uh, this is micromax uh, before i forget Micromax is a company. It's a very interesting logo. Think about it. They wanted to attract the youth, and they wanted to show the power, and they used the punch uh, for their M I of the Micromax, and nothing like anything was their motto. Uh, you know, Micromax used to make TVs and phones and things like that. So those are interesting examples. Here are some more example. Um, this is a company called Common Floor. Look at their logo. It's very interesting. There is a C and a an F, and you put it in a way it looks like a key. common floor is nothing but a, a, a real estate web page where you can find rental homes and things for renting and finding the right house this is another company that's called green future they build products that are carbon free clean and green and they they have an interesting uh, logo which has got a bulb with a green light inside it a uh, filament of sorts um, again some more examples of how to create a logo and have your Uh, uh you know the right motto a few lines uh, a few words about what your company is all about here are some more examples i'm just going to go quickly click and and then walk through these are very creative ones uh that i 
that I kind of wanted to show as example, Creative Simple Logos. This is a, a company that sells fishes. They call themselves Eight Fish for whatever reason. And look at their, these are eight fishes and just, you know, in a color uh, uh, yin yang that they've put together. Um, Infinite is a shoe company. These are their high heel shoes. And you put it together, that's Infinite Possibility. This is Coffee Point with the CNP, it forms a cup. Uh, there is a stationary company called Scribble. It's Scribbul. They put a pencil with a horn, just showing the bow. Uh, a barber shark called Mr. Cuts. Uh, very interestingly put a scissors with a kind of a ending with a mustache here. Uh, bottle searcher, Asian paints, the infinite possibility. They put the A and P together to show Asian paints here. Uh, fish lovers, they drew the fish with a bunch of hearts. So it kind of conveys that message, Green Labs. And this one's uh, uh, Iron Duck is, a, is, is a, a company that does, uh, you know, irons your clothes, laundry service and things like that. They have the duck and, and, and it's kind of interesting. Just, just to give you an idea that you can do some really creative things with the way you name your company, with the logo you create and the motto you will have for the company. I want you to keep in mind because uh, sooner or later you're all going to start thinking about what you want to call your entrepreneurship or your company name and um, what uh, kind of logo you're going to design and what kind of motto you're going to keep for uh, for your company because you need to be very proud of it it should be something that is uh, very simple uh, people are able to understand uh, your business coffee point I, they know it's a coffee shop similarly mr cuts they know it's a it's a saloon for men right um and and the logo is very attractive and, and you know people like to associate themselves with products and companies that are uh, creative and eye-catching so just wanted to give you that example as you build your thoughts for what you want to do for your company so some of the key things that uh, you want to keep in mind as you look at um, the name of your company the logo and the motto for the name make sure you keep a name that tries to convey what you're doing it can be a few words it can be an acronym it can be something new um, it could be a different language word uh, that's also fine um, don't get too creative but something that is you can associate with what you're doing the logo again artwork is not a must it could be alphabets it could be lines and strokes that you use you don't need to have a logo that has a big artwork in it you saw coffee point as an example it was just a C and a P two alphabets uh, similarly for Asian paints you saw A and P combined together uh, having a very simple logo um, but uh, you know think about making a logo that's uh, uh, also going well with the name of the company motto is uh, something what you stand for as a company uh, easy to read and easy to say so it also conveys your the company's culture what you you stand for as a as a product company um, and another important thing is when you're designing your company name logo and motto try to keep it simple try to make it little catchy don't get too uh, much caught up on uh, being very creative and unique but try to be in that space of simplicity unique creative and and something that's uh, uh, catchy for 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 people to understand okay so those are some examples of the names logos and motors that I shared with you as a team start to think maybe you can uh, also have some sessions after this particular um, uh, uh, you know um, day today that we're talking on Pella Venture, maybe one of the assignments that you can do after a session today is to spend some time as a team what do you want your name uh, the name of the company to be logo and motto but more importantly you want to know what you're building because that's going to be the big part of the name logo and motto you need to be very clear about what you're building so no need to rush uh, naming your company right now let's spend some more time on the product and product side what we want to build I told you about the need the talent and the and 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 uh, how you uh, bring uh, those three uh, uh, circles together for the right product right um, that there should be uh, something that you can take advantage of all the talent that you have the ideas that you come up as a team and there should be a need for it once you know what you're building then it becomes easier for you to name your company and have a logo and motor so no need to rush but something to think about okay let's now uh, go to products so you know the first part of today's session was about um, companies logos and motors now let's talk about products and customers 
sooner or later uh, as an entrepreneur and as a entrepreneurship venture your team and group will want to build products you want to ask the question what products are we going to build and i think in the first forming of the team session everybody wrote two ideas and you you, you were in more in the listening space rather than criti- critiquing and looking at pros and cons uh, but i'll also teach you today about as you think about product and product ideas how to talk to some potential customers about your product uh, you want to before you start building you want to talk to some potential customers it could be your family friends um, it could be uh, you know people you know uh, how can you engage with them in a discussion to kind of validate your idea and ask them what they think about it get inputs from these potential customers because most of the time people make the mistake of hey i'll build this and then i'll be able to sell it but you should be able to engage with customers your future customers or potential customers to get their ideas to get their inputs as you make the product because you may want to change it a little bit for whatever good reason and we'll talk about it so you want to get inputs before you build and you also want to know will the customers pay for it if you built that product see there are always people will say i like it it's great but then when you build it and say this is how much it cost they say no no i don't want so you want to understand are these products something that will be useful for them do they need it and if they need it are they willing to pay for it um, and and as you get the inputs from your potential customers we will also discuss about discuss about what do customers like to see in a product you know their own inputs in addition to what you are going to tell them this is what we are going to build what do they like to see because those become very good inputs for you to build as a new product or add into an existing product idea that you might have so we'll talk today a lot about products and customers and how to engage with customers okay so before we forget this is something that we always keep in mind a product is an intersection of these three we don't want it to be bang perfectly in the middle that's a little theoretical sometimes it will be you know a little here more a little bit more here that's okay but more importantly it should have some overlap with these three buckets great talent good idea but if there is no need you will struggle to sell um if you have a great idea and you have you know the perfect need but if you don't have the talent that's okay you may be able to find something even if you put something that's an average product it might still sell because there is a need and similarly you have the talent and you got the need you may not have the brilliant idea but when you talk to customers you may get the idea and then you'll have the right product so it's important to make sure always these three come together okay so with that let's go okay so as you're starting to think about products you know you're going to sit down as a team uh, look at everybody's talent um you if you remember you're going to ask hey what do you good at what are you interested in and then what is your product idea go with each one of them what is your skill uh what is your interest and what's your product idea and then if you have these three inputs from everyone in your team and if you ask each one to give two product ideas you have 10 to 12 ideas but you also have a list of your talent in the team and what their interests are so then you can start to slowly build on the 10 to 12 and morph it into a right nice product uh, 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 you know possibility so one of the things that you need to do uh, in in the coming session after today is to agree on the products that you are going to build it may be one product or more than one but you need to agree as a team and i've told you in the last session how you arrive at it the way you arrive at it is sit down with your 3 to 5 member team who are all entrepreneurs in the team who are all co uh, founders ask them what their talents are what their interests are and a couple of ideas on products from each one of them i also told you to cast the net a little wider you can also tap into the talents of your parents maybe some of your friends and relatives who are not part of your uh, entrepreneur team yet but you can tap into their talent so you can cast the net a little wider but once you have that agree on the products you want to build and when i say agree you need to have a clear understanding of a uh, clear understanding of what you're going to build it should be clear if somebody says i want to write a book you want to ask is it a novel um is it a sequel based uh, what kind of genre is the fiction going to be uh, is it non fictional you know be very specific and have a clear understanding as a team 
discuss as a team to make sure everyone is aware and aligned about the idea need not be agreed yet but at least they know what it is and then write down the list of products you also want to make sure in the list of products that you will build you have a name for each product that you have as a company what will that product really have meaning you can say it's a novel but then what is it it's fictional or self help or something else right so you should have a little bit more details about it and why are you building it is it solving some need is there something that you are going to accomplish because you are going to be able to sell it so why are you building it is a good one it could be simply saying that hey we have the talent it's a great idea people will always buy it if we put it in there that's one kind of product another kind of product is we know people need this there isn't one like this that's cheap uh, cost effective um, you know high quality and we have the talent and we're going to build that's another kind of product it's okay it can be either one sometimes you may end up building a product where there is not any immediate need but people may buy it because it looks good it has high quality or it has some attributes that they like that they want to buy that's fine too so but you really want to write down why are you building it and then everyone in the team should have a good understanding and agree on the candidate product list and then you want to iron it down to a small few which is achievable remember the smart goal which is achievable that you can go build it okay in a time bound manner within the time that you have okay so that's on the product agreement now i'm going to give you an example here so when you create a product for your team that is going to come out of your company you want to have a product name you want to have a description um, and then you want to say how many you're building um, you know as a team create a list of products based on the steps that i told you and then you want to say i want to do a product and, and give a name for the product name of the product should be creative but not misleading so that it gives the buyer what the product is about but it also increases their curiosity or an excitement to buy it you know you could have called this product painting instead of calling it nature on walls so the buyer knows it's something about nature it's something that's going on the wall it creates a little bit of curiosity description says it's oil painting of nature scenes right so there is a the product name should be a little creative but not misleading and should create the uh, kind of spark the curiosity of the of the buyer and then have a description for it so that you know what it does what it sometimes what it does is an aspect sometimes the raw materials that you use in this case oil painting what's the value for the buyer um and why would they like it for example your design and seats and it says it's a personalized cushion cover so maybe you put the 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 monogram or the alphabet or name of the person who's living in the house or the house name or something like that or a pet's name or you putting a pillow cover that's got the kid children name or the a uh, house owner's name and things like that so it tells a little bit more about the value what raw materials you use and what the product is all about um you will also use this description later for marketing so keep that in mind and last column is about how many are you going to build the number of products you build should consider cost of building and customer interest so you may put a number here for now that's okay but eventually we'll tune this because when you're building a product you're going to spend some money to build it so do you have enough money to build that many number of products and the second is do you want to build more or do you want to build less if you build more then you will have excess inventory if you build less then you have a missed opportunity because customers may want more but you didn't build so you won't be able to sell it so you we need to look at the right number here for now do worry about it just put the number that you think you know and then as we talk to potential customers we'll find you it that's the next step so key thing right product name description and how many we are going to build and these are the things that you will keep in mind when you're doing this work now <clears throat> you all as a team sat down and um, created some list of products and and you should be filling this table and your coordinator there will give you sheets to write this down um in in this exact format and once you are done with this how do you know if this is the right thing if this is the right product whether it will sell this is where i was talking to you about talking to potential customers engaging with them early enough so that you you know you understand if this is the right product and i'm going to talk about how how do we talk to potential customers number 
you know, start off with your friends and families about your product idea. Explain what you're trying to solve or what you're trying to build. You don't need to give the product name itself. Uh, for example, you could say, hey, we're thinking about, you know, everybody's buying new houses. They got a lot of wall space. We're thinking about, you know, we are in an urban area, so we want to bring more nature scenes in here from the different states of India, maybe. Uh, what do you think? You don't want to really say, can I give you an oil painting that you can put in your living room? Will you buy it? You don't want to start that way. You want to explain what you're trying to solve. Similarly, on the other example I showed, right? The personalized cushion cover, you'll say, hey, everybody has upholstery, you have couch and you have pillows and bed. Hey, would it be interesting that you had the right kind of, you know, personalization on this based on the colors that you like, or maybe some artwork on it or some monogram on it? What do you think? Ask them if that problem is relevant for them. Will it help if we solve? These two were a little bit more of a home decor kind of a category of examples, but there could be others where you may be saying, hey, uh, will it help if uh, you are able to track your pet in your house and can we build a little science gadget for it? Uh, do we lose your pet all the time and can you have something in your phone that says how far is your pet from where you are? You know, something like that. It could be that. Or it could be, um, you know, other problems that you're solving. So engage in a discussion with your potential customer and talk to them more about the problem, not about the product. Explain your idea and the product at a high level without giving details. The reason is because you want to get inputs from your customers. You should be also willing to change a little bit of your product idea. If you go and say, this is what I'm building, do you like it or not? Then the discussion becomes very binary. Yeah, I like it or no, I don't like it. Then you don't know what to do. You want to use this engagement with the customer to get the inputs from them. If they tell you more ideas, ideas are good it, it can come from a customer it need not come from your team and you can take that idea and fit it into your product too that's the best thing because because at the end of it if you did build that product based on a customer idea it's easy to sell because they wanted it it's their idea too right so make the discussion in a manner that you are talking about a problem or the context and at a high level on the product but not the entire product details because that makes it very difficult to have a discussion and get an input. Write down these responses, notes, as you talk to the, the potential customers. And my suggestion is each member in the team talks to parents and maybe two more family members by next session. So you get at least a, you know three to four customer feedback interview, potential customer feedback interview on what you think you're going to build and what inputs they gave. So very important that you keep this in mind on how you talk to them. The context, the problem you're trying to solve, not the details of the product. Ask them for their ideas. Ask them what they think about it. Ask them if they have additional inputs. Ask them if they will buy it, if you built it. Right? Those are the important aspects to keep in mind to check if you're on the right track. So we did two two aspects that we talked about, right? We talked about ideas for product and we talked about how to engage with customers. I'm just putting that together in two sides of the slide. On the left is the idea. When you have a product idea, what problem are you solving? What needs are you meeting? And the ideas you have, does it solve a problem? To explain it in two, three lines, put it out there. What products are you planning to build? List of products, its features, and also have some discussion around who will be the buyers. Is it the household? Is it office? Is it adults versus children? Are there specific personalities for your product that will buy it? You know, you may sell it to a hotel maybe because you're maybe making some really cleanable, washable mats for the plate or something like that. I don't know. Or it could be an application to know how many people came into a store so that you know if you had a good day or not, right? or people spend more time in one aisle versus another aisle. I'm just giving you examples uh, here. I'm not telling you these are the exact products, but your target then is it's a hotel or is it a store versus I'm selling a product for children or is it for pet, pet owners? So know who are your potential buyers. So that's all on the left about your ideas, about your product, what you need to have ready. The one on the right is what we just talked about also is when you talk to a potential customer, what should you do? So you should have done the left before you do the right. 
you should have fair bit of idea generation done within your team which i talked to you in the last session right two ideas each that takes into account the talent of everybody in the team and then the three circles the need the talent and the ideas spend some time you don't want to have 10 different ideas you want to synthesize everybody's talent and come up with you know maybe two or three product ideas not more than that at best it could be even one also that's fine and then once you have that you go talk to customers how do you talk to some potential customers you're doing this before you build the product it's very important the way you do it is you talk to them about the context of the problem you're solving not the product engage in a discussion get their input get their feedback explain a little bit at a high level about your product ask them what they think about it get their thoughts on it and then um, more importantly ask them if they're willing to pay for it right and maybe even you could even ask how much will you pay for this if you did something like this that will also give you an idea about what should be the car pricing of the product okay so those are two important aspects that should be done after today's session as the hands-on work okay let's spend some more time right if you remember when you did the product ideation i gave an example nature on walls your design and seats these were two products that the team thought of what was the description they said they were going to do 10 and 5 after talking to the customers maybe the customer said you know what i don't need 10 i you know we probably not too much interested we have already a lot of paintings and stuff so they tuned it to through three and then when they talked to the customers they got another idea maybe one of the potential customers said hey it'll be great if you can give me placemats that are washable for serving bowls as i put them on the dining table they decided that's a great idea let's make 10 of those um, the point here that i'm trying to say is there were two products that that team went with with what how many number they wanted to do they changed the number they also got an idea for another product to go build this is just an example as an outcome of how you fine tune your product ideas based on customer inputs right so from customer inter interviews discussion that you have revisit your product what do you want to build and the number of units that you want to build sometimes your assessments of how many you want to build may be over or under in this case they wanted to do 10 right building more than what you can sell can create a pressure in pricing meaning if you have more than you can sell and you're not able to meet your profits then you will price it higher which is dangerous right building less than what you can sell can create a missed opportunity for profits meaning let's assume you built five but the, the demand was for 15 and you're like oh i wish i built 10 more then i could have sold more uh, provided i had the capital to build the 10 more and then make the profit so important to get that customers in interviews can also give you ideas into building new products in this case think about this placements it's um, even though you did not initially have it in your product list you can consider adding it because you heard it from a few customers again you want to discuss it as a team and then get the collective intelligence going there make decision on products and how many you want to build based on both the customer input and your company's abilities let's assume one more customer said hey i'd love for you to uh, create uh, disposable plates for us and i would like to use it now if your team doesn't have the capability or the talent to build disposable plates you can't the customer input might be good but the capability is not there so you can't build a product so it's always important that you make decision based on the customer input and your company's abilities which is your team's abilities and then also make decisions on can we build more of something do we have the skill to build these new products or they ask for placemats you can add it to your list of products hopefully you have the skill to do it if you don't it shouldn't make it into your product list right so some of these things are important um, as you go through the customer interview once you have your first draft of products with that we'll stop this session next week we'll talk about plan and budget but before i stop i want to talk do two things that we should have accomplished by this session too on first session you should have formed teams and you should know who your team members are good introduction of them you should have gone through their talent their interest and their ideas um, and you should have had some discussion to make sure the list of all raw ideas can come together based on need 
unified talent and the idea should be based on unifying the talent to come up with two to three or maybe maximum five products that you can build five is too many one to three is what i would recommend so when you sat down as a team you had 10 to 12 product ideas because each one brought two but that was based on their individual talent and interest but when you discussed and unified the talent of everybody in the team the 10 to 12 should somehow come to three to five at best and once you have that that's your first session's work the second session's work is start thinking about company name logo and motto but before you do that fine tune your products to the three to five then you know what you're building you have a better idea of how to name your company what logo to create and motto to have identify at least five people potential customers that you can go talk to about your products so so in, after the sec second session you should have filled your product name and description everybody in the team should have agreed to it everybody in the team should have agreed to that uh, product description and the name and you have aligned on how many you want to build fill the table without showing that to the potential customers three to five potential customers you want to engage in a discussion get their inputs once you get their input your product uh, shortlist that you've done may get fine-tuned like shown in this slide so at the end of second session you should have had a fine-tuned set of products this will take time you have the teams formed you had individual team members ideas you discussed you synthesized and collated them into the unified talent with the need talent idea intersection created a shorter list of products then you widened and you've written them down very clearly then you've identified four to five potential customers that you're going to talk to and i've given you tips about how to talk about the problem about the context not the product specifics get their input once you got their input you will fine tune now after that you kind of sort of have a good understanding a reasonable understanding of what you want to build right now the question is i have to start building and which is what we'll start seeing in the next session how to plan for it how to create the budget for it while you're doing that you can already think about your company name logo and motto okay so that's our second session i hope you enjoyed this session uh, we'll do a recap as we meet next time but there are some very fun exciting work that you should be doing with your other co-founders and entrepreneurs in your team as you march into the exciting journey of entrepreneurship thank you